Every once in a while, something comes along that changes oh, yeah. what you thought was possible. Feeling those goosebumps, they're hitting me. And this is one of those moments. Oh, sick. Look at the robot. It's astonishing. Wow, very cool. All the creative possibilities this camera opens up. This is gonna change everything. Today, Sony announced two new products, a 300 millimeter F 2.8 full frame lens that apparently seems to be first of its kind in terms of size and performance. And then of course, what we're here to talk about, the Sony A9 Mark III, which I think marks a changing point in mirrorless technology and mirrorless cameras overall, and may actually be the moment where I actually consider switching to Sony. I'm actually gonna to react to the special event. There's no like reviews or videos out at the time of this recording. So all I'm going off of is what I've seen here on the listing on BNH, as well as the event that Sony announced and the event that's taking place right now in New York. This camera is a full frame global shutter sensor, 24 megapixels, which to me is the perfect sweet spot for most cameras. 4K 120, 10-bit video, S-Log3, s, -Log3, s Tone, wouldn't expect anything less. Again, the global shutter is the most interesting part about this, which the a7S III doesn't have. Eight stop, five axis in-body image stabilization, a 9.44 million dot EVF with 240 frames per second refresh rate. I mean, truly insane. Up to 120 frames per second continuous shooting with autofocus and auto exposure flash sync up to 180 thousandth of a second i've never heard of anything like this before dual c fast express a and sd card slots interesting so let's take a look at some of the pictures here you can see we've got the i guess the standard flip screen or is it oh no it's the a7r5 flip screen so it's the flip out and around screen which is Definitely the best system that I've ever seen that I've ever used the a7r5 Screen so this is fantastic. I wonder if anybody who's using the a7r5 is gonna switch over to this It also seems as though they've Changed the ergonomics of the grip which to me is really exciting I feel like Sony's have been notorious for having very small bodies and even when they went to this newer body style I still felt that it wasn't that comfortable to hold so I'm excited to see a little bit more meat on the bone here with the grip nice kind of rounded edges it's interesting how our hands like round things I mean <laughs> you know here's a Logitech mouse just fits beautifully in my hand. We don't want sharp objects to hold on to. A lot of the Sony cameras have been very sharp. It looks like they're actually working with professionals and in, in realizing, oh, we need to round the corners off because people actually hold these with their hands. Just reading the specs alone, I'm already very interested and very uh, curious about this camera. So let's check out the video. The never ending challenge. A single photo to change views. A single photo to make history. In an age overwhelmed by motion. Sometimes it's only a single powerful frame that can... That's a good frame to use, honestly, right there. I mean, that, that really encompasses the beauty and the the reason that you want a global shutter. I mean, there's a lot of movement here. Also, I think this is showing off the fast flash uh, sync as well. So yeah, cool image to use in this promo. For photographers who believe in the power of one frame, the challenge of alpha continues. The new nine. The new nine. Alpha 9 Mark 3. Nice. They're using the word Mark. I've always wondered how to say it properly. Like, they always put the number there, but they don't put MK, like all the other companies, MK, Mark. So I guess it is the A9 Mark 3, even though it's A9 3, with the way they spell it out. I don't know. What does that say? World's first, compared to interchangeable lens cameras. As of November 2023, product announcement, Sony survey. <laughs> 
So, I mean, the the Red Komodo has a global shutter. Um, Red cameras have had global shutters. Uh, one of my favorite cameras that I ever used and that unfortunately I wish I, I purchased and held on to, the digital Bolex D16 had a global shutter. Um, so global shutters have existed for a long time. The Blackmagic 4K production had one. So this isn't like the first global shutter ever, obviously. Um, but in the modern era, it is, certainly. First, full frame global shutter image sensor. Captures the world as it is in an instant. I feel like I can hear uh, my friend Jevin in the audience there. <laughs> I know his voice well. Without pixel distortion, free from the limitations of a rolling shutter, an unprecedented way to capture, powered by a new image sensor blackout free 120 frames wow. per second 120 frames per second blackout free global shutter with real-time recognition autofocus yep so it's using the same ai autofocus that we've seen already from the a7r5 which is best in class best you know autofocus around right now i mean just bar none it's truly the best an astonishing, never before possible 180,000th shutter speed. 180,000th minimum or maximum shutter speed is one one hundred. Maximum shutter speed is one sixteen thousandth when aperture larger than 1.8 is used. Interesting. One eighty thousandth is not available when shooting movies when using the variable shutter function or when no lens is mounted. Okay, interesting. There's a little disclaimers there, but that is crazy. That means you, as a photographer, don't necessarily need to carry around an ND filter anymore. Um, and you can really freeze motion in a way that's never been done before. I, I don't know if, is that the fastest shutter speed in the world? I don't know, let me know. I mean, that image right there that they took of the water just kind of going over this guy like, this is truly, it's very interesting, very cool. I mean, you can't get that image on an iPhone, you know? Um, the way that the water is just frozen in midair is very interesting, very cool. I can hear the- Flash synchronization at any shutter speed. I can hear the people in the audience freaking out too. Wait, sorry, what'd you say? Flash synchronization at any shutter speed. That's the disclaimer there. Some variations in brightness and color may occur between shots when using shutter speeds higher than one ten thousandth of a second. Light level may not reach the manual light output level setting at some shutter speeds, resulting in insufficient insu light levels. Okay. Well, very interesting. So that means um, as a photographer, you can just crank your shutter all the way up, get some really interesting creative shots using flash sync with very fast shutter speeds. Flash synchronization at any shutter speed. Craft world. Look at that. Yeah, look at that image of this guy. He's sliding in the dirt. They got that cool flash. So, you know, the top of the line flagship sports camera, 1DX Mark II, which is a couple years old now. It came out in 2020, I believe. One two fiftieth of a second. I mean, the <laughs> that's that makes this like one eighty thousandth of a second just so much better or whatever. I mean, this, this is nuts. This is really nuts. And I think this is really because of that global shutter. They're able to do this. And of course the processor that's inside of this thing is able to just do all this. So at lightning speed, I mean, this is really interesting and opens up a door to a new world of photography that's never been possible before for, for sports shooters. And, and honestly, just for anybody, for any creator, it doesn't have to be sports. You can get really creative with this. It's beyond the limits of ambient light. Refined product design made for your hands. Yes. Grip. Comfortable grips. Please. A tool for professionals. A tool for photographers challenged to capture the unseen frame. The power of one frame. That bass drop. Love it. Alpha 9 Mark Three. Nice. A new story begins here. A new story begins here. Open ended. It is Sony, so you know they're working on, you know, whatever else is next. I think if you're a video shooter, 
maybe hold off on buying this camera. This is definitely made for photographers specifically for adventure or, uh, you know, sports journalists. Um, I would imagine that a global shutter will be coming to the A7S line because as a video shooter, global shutter is a big deal. So I just, I, I don't, I don't think we as video guys should consider pulling the trigger on this unless you just have expendable income or you really are a hybrid shooter and you really love this. But I'm curious to hear more about this camera and, and obviously specifically for video. But the 9 Mark III creates a new era of cameras. We made the impossible possible. For so many years, people said that a global shutter camera is impossible. A global shutter sensor is impossible. But the Alpha 9 III took the impossible and made it ridiculous. Now, when we look at the global shutter sensor, not only is it a global shutter, but it's stacked and it's got global shutter and it's got everything that we've been working towards over years and years and years. 24.6 megapixels, which really is the sweet spot because you saw it shoots really fast and we want something that's not enormous files. 24.6 is that sweet spot, especially for global shutter. It gives us global shutter without compromise. People said, you're going to compromise ISO. You're going to compromise dynamic range. Well, we overcame that. We're Sony. We're the largest sensor manufacturer in the world. Of course, we're going to do it. We're yep, it's true. Sony and Canon are the only companies in the world that have sensor fabs, as far as I'm aware. Canon makes their own sensors, and then Sony makes the sensors for everybody. That includes Panasonic, Fuji, Nikon, I think even Leica, you know, Hasselblad. <laughs> so like Sony, and of course, the iPhone. I mean, I think a lot of the success that Sony has had in the camera division and the success that they've had with their sensor technology comes from the fact that Apple pays them billions of dollars to develop the sensors for their phones. So yes, he's right. Like Sony's the only company that could kind of push the industry towards this global shutter and to do what this thing is possible, uh, what this thing is able to do um, makes it possible because they have the best technology in the world. They, they're they literally the leaders in sensor technology. So we're the only ones that can do it. And you guys know Global Shutter, we just talked about it, but it exposes and reads every single pixel at the same exact time. Every single one. For 40 years, we've been doing conventional rolling shutter, and we've been making it faster and faster and faster, and you saw the Alpha 9 make it as fast as it can possibly get. But no matter how fast the car is, it's still slower than teleportation, right? So it's just different types of speeds. You're not gonna have something that is instantaneous. And when you have something that's instantaneous, you literally have zero distortion. Yeah, it's true. In fact, <clears throat> they have a good example there. Golf, image, rolling, shutter. I feel like every time somebody takes a picture of a golf club with a rolling shutter camera, you can really see the difference. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty funny. Um, it's kind of like one of the classic rolling shutter type images that you can get. You can really see where the limitations are <laughs> with the uh, with the camera. So yeah, so with a global shutter, that's not going to be an issue anymore because it just boop takes the whole image, just like a film camera. But I, even with a film camera, there is a little bit of like, as the mechanical shutter is closing and opening, you can actually get, I think, some form of a rolling shutter or some form of a blur or something because it is opening and closing the sh the uh, the shutter up and down. It's not like it's just going to instantly cover the whole thing at once. And, you know, it it is even with film, you can have some limitations here. So with this global shutter, it's just pop, just the whole, the whole image is captured from top to bottom instantly. Very exciting. We've had anti-distortion. We've had low distortion. But no matter what, when you're swinging that golf club, you see on all of our cameras that don't have a global shutter, you're going to see distortion. When you're recording outside of a moving vehicle and you're trying to record something moving, you're going to get distortion. But gone are the days where you even need to think about a mechanical shutter because with a global shutter, you have completely no distortion with, with um, video and stills. It changes everything. And of course, powering this entire camera and being able to process enormous amounts of data is the Bion's XR processing engine, giving us eight times more power than the 9 Mark II. But the 9 Mark III can shoot 
really, really fast, like you saw. The global shutter gives us the ability to shoot at 120 frames per second. And I know everyone's thinking, well, lots of cameras can shoot really fast, so what's the trade-off? What's going to happen here? Like, what are you going to do? Well, we can do it without trade-offs. We can do it with full autofocus, full subject recognition. We're going to be able to shoot for 1.6 seconds, which is 192 frames. We can shoot in 14-bit RAW. So if you're shooting RAW plus JPEG at 120 frames per second, that's six gigabytes of information per second. So talking about the power to be able to process all that, we need that DRAM, we need the stack, we need the global to be able to give us everything that this camera can do. And of course, when you look to the viewfinder, you need to have blackout free. We're pushing the limits. It's here to stay. Blackout free gives us the ability to look through the viewfinder and have an uninterrupted view of your subject. That's amazing. I mean, for photographers, this is a big deal, especially if you're a sports photographer. Taking those images of the runner, of the athlete, and being able to focus on your composition and framing and make sure that your, your autofocus is tracking where it needs to be and not having that blackout occur basically as the image is being taken on other cameras, especially you know a, a literal DSLR, every time the mirror flips up and down, you're, you're getting blackout. So you kind of have to anticipate where the subject is going to be. Basically now you're just looking at 120 frames per second video in a nine point something million dot EVF. I mean, this is nuts. You, don't, you can see the world through your lens, through the viewfinder, the same way that you see the world with your eyes. Now I know what you're gonna say, can it keep up? Can the lenses keep up? Can the camera keep up in terms of autofocus? Heck yeah, it can. 120 frames per second autofocus and auto exposure to be able to give autofocus calculations for every single frame. And I know 120 frames per second is a lot. I know a lot of people are like, I don't need 120 frames per second. But you can use it in a different way now. Normally, if you have a feature like that, you'd have to set the camera up to always shoot like that. True. And setting your camera up to always shoot at 120 frames per second is pretty limiting. It's a lot of images. So we created something called Speed Boost. We added this little cool custom button on the front of the camera. That's the speed boost button. So I can be shooting at the speed of a 9 Mark II, which is 20 frames per second. I can be shooting at the speed of a, and then I can just press that custom button wow. to be able to go to 120 frames per second. So I'll be sitting here shooting 20 frames per second, and without taking my finger off that shutter, I'll be able to then just see that moment, see that moment, and be able to just capture that specific wow. precise moment Pretty to be cool. able to get that shot at 120 frames per second. Look at that. 20 frames, 20 frames, 20 frames, 120 frames. Boom. And I know what you're saying. When you go and play it back, how am I going to go through all these images? I'm going to sit here, I'm going to be rolling through it for like 20 minutes. This is annoying. Mm -hmm. But it actually, when you play back the image, it shows you one file, you press it, and then it plays back a video. Because why not? It's 120 frames per second. And then you can just stop the video at that peak action, and then you mm. can start, you can protect it, you can do what you want. So you can be able cool. to go through 120 frames per second fast. That's cool. Yeah, they're thinking of everything these days. So that's great. Yeah, that is always the problem when you have like high speed bursts. You take all these images, you don't know how to see it. You can't like view it because it's like you go to your viewer and you got to like scan through it and you're like, oh my gosh, I, you know, it's too many images. It takes forever just to look at look at the pictures. So packaging it into a video is a beautiful idea. It's 80,000th of a second. We need a comma in there. So we can shoot at a faster shutter speed than any camera out there. Ultra fast. Mm. So because we're reading every pixel instantaneously, why not just do it as fast as possible? So we can capture things crystal clear. We can capture the fastest action and freeze it and freeze that moment in time. Capture that one image. But I heard your reaction. Flash sync at any and all shutter speeds. When I say any and all, yeah. Like that is everything we're talking about is just game changing. And when I say any and all, that also means 80,000th of a second. Flash shutter speed. Flash sync. Amazing also enables us to do away with certain features that we're always trying to work around conventional rolling shutter sensors. HSS was invented to work around conventional rolling shutter sensors because light is light. It flashes really fast. It's extremely fast. So we had to create HSS to be able to keep up and slow down that rolling shutter. Mm. But now with global shutter, we're able to free ourselves from HSS and be able to do full TTL and we can do full flash output at any shutter speed. So mm. this way it's going to be synced up in any way that you want. Very so this cool. way, we talked right. about stills so much. 
But let's talk about video. Global shutter for video oversample. is like where it's at. That's what we want, right? That's what I'm talking about. So you're going to be able to get completely no distortion in video as well as stills. We talked about it before, but seeing it for some reason makes Raw. it different, right? So you can be in that moving truck and you can be panning back and forth. Your lines are laser straight. You're going to be able to do things that cameras just have been dreaming about doing forever. And it's able to well, do it. Dreaming about, for, I mean, we've had global shutters in cinema cameras. This isn't new for, for cinema. In 4K, 60p with 6K oversampling. And it's our first alpha camera to do 4K, 120p without cropping. Nice. Yeah. And it's got all the other suite of amazing video features that we've been introducing, like 10-bit 422-all-i, like mm -hmm. S-Cinetone 16-bit output. And it also has dynamic active mode stabilization, which doesn't get enough love. Again, it's something that we can utilize and use and give us gimbal-like stabilization without carrying around a gimbal. It's a slight crop, like 1.2, depending on your situation, but it works. And I implore you to try it out. If you don't like it, you don't have to use it. <laughs> Again, a little sarcasm there. <laughs> Basically, Sony's problem with their cameras compared to others, and I've got an S5 here, is their mount. Um, if you can see here, the, the mount on this camera is huge. I mean, the L mount is a big, beefy mount. And on the Sony E mount, their mount is really tiny because it was actually initially designed for an APS-C sensor size. I don't know if they anticipated the um, you know upgrade to full frame, but basically their sensor is right on the edge of like getting in the way of the mount because the mount is so tiny. Now, the benefit of that is they do have very small lenses with Sony and smaller bodies, even though it's full frame, like the A7C camera that they make, um, which is really cool. But the flip side of that, the, the limitation of that is their IBIS isn't as good as something like the Lumix, which has much better stabilization with the uh, IBIS. Every generation of camera, you always see tweaks. You always see improvements. And we've had a big it's improvement true. on this camera in terms of the grip, in terms of the way it feels. It Good. feels better than any camera we've had before, to me. Good. And we've even changed the placement of the shutter button. So instead of being more on the top, it's more natural to your hand. So you have less Good. fatigue throughout the day. Honestly, these are all things that I've kind of complained about with Sony cameras over the years. Their ergonomics have just been terrible. And their cameras also, in my opinion, look ugly. And I think that this is looking just much more, it's, it's starting to look a little bit more pleasing overall the camera. And then obviously to like the hand grip and the design seems to be much more ergonomic, smoother, um, better design. I hope to see that carry through with an A7S line as well. Four axis multi-angle yep. LCD, There's that same LCD screen. that we saw on the 7R5. So you can be able to go off to the side, you can go up the top, Perfect. you can go on the bottom. It doesn't add any bulk to the camera. I mean, you know, it's just, I mean, if it's already perfect, just don't change it. And it's got an incredible color gamut, something that doesn't get discussed enough. It's got full DCI P3 color gamut on it. So what you're recording is what's on the screen. So you can make sure that you're seeing exactly what the camera's recording. Well, so at yeah, 120 frames per does. second, you want the field of view through the viewfinder to be as beautiful as possible. So it's our 9.4 million dot OLED EVF. But one thing we're doing differently Nine here is that now you can have 120 frame per second refresh rate at the highest possible quality. Cool. You don't have to bring down the quality to shoot at higher it's refresh rate. It's a great EVF. I mean, a photographer is going to love this. I'm going to love it. Nine million dot is insane. Of course, it's magnesium alloy, just like our other cameras. And that's the Alpha 9 Mark III coming in spring 2024, Weather 59 dollars OK, interesting. Love seeing all your faces, and I can't wait to see what everyone creates let's with this. So let's create together. But before I go, I do want to show you an incredible video that the team put together. It always gives me goosebumps. You guys know that, but I'm a sucker and I'm sensitive. But so thank oh. you very much. Can't wait to hang out with you guys. Goodbye. All right, let's watch this emotional video from Alpha. For me, when I'm photographing. I can already tell, like, this was definitely shot on the A9 III because that handheld shot has that motion cadence of a global sensor. That's a word that you might hear thrown around now that this camera's out. It's something that, you know, when you talk about the Komodo from RED, 
there is kind of a natural look, a more filmic look to a global sensor. It's hard to put your finger on it. It's more of an intuitive, emotional thing. But I think it's just because it emulates film. It Film doesn't have a rolling shutter. So it just has perfect motion. And I think humans are just so tuned to what reality is. Like a rolling shutter is not reality. So even just the minute tweaks and changes that happen, I think as humans, we can detect that. So it has a much more natural motion cadence. I can already tell from this handheld footage. That's exciting. What I'm really seeking is... Audio's flipping pretty bad. Just a moment of real ethereal beauty. Oh, I love the handheld shots. Dude, this camera looks so good handheld. Holy cow. I wonder if they turn the IBIS off. A lot of cinematographers hate IBIS. If you turn the IBIS off... Just let the global shutter be a global shutter. Throw the thing on a, on like a shoulder rig. Give it some weight. Oh man, this is gonna be nice. That single flash of light. And the fact that you can just switch now from standard 4K to 4K 120, that's huge without any crop, with no crop. Like Sony shooters have been annoyed by that for a while, I know. This camera is looking like a great video camera, to be honest. Come alive into a beautiful story. The color grade looks great on this one. I wasn't a fan of the first video. It looks good here. Obviously, it's super compressed. This is a live stream, so I don't even think this is 4K. I think it's just an HD. Yeah, 1080p. That looks good. Freeze time in a way that encapsulates emotion. Encapsulates? Encapsulates? Is that how you pronounce it? I've always said encapsulates. Encapsule. Oh. Encapsulates? I don't know. I never heard it said like that. <laughs> really makes you think. Oh, that's cool. And most importantly. Oh, he's British. That's why. Most importantly. Feel. We're always trying to advance. Bro, this is, this camera's dope. To progress. You know, it's funny. We're so used to the rolling shutter. It's like, it's just something that we've come to accept. But nice uh, Apple Watch Ultra he's wearing there, by the way. Um, there is something to like, almost the peace of mind of like, this camera has a global shutter. So like, I don't have to worry about either photo or video. This seems to be like a no compromise camera. Like it's, it's got best in class EVF. It's got best in class autofocus, best in class video performance. If you only care about 4k, it doesn't do 8k obviously, but it's a 6k to 4k down res, no crop in 4k. You get the raw output, you get the 10 bit 422. You got, you know, the best autofocus they have, the best screen, new ergonomics. Like what else do you want? <laughs> To change the way people see the world and every once in a while something comes along that changes oh, yeah. what you thought was possible feeling those goosebumps they're hitting me and this is one of those moments oh sick look at the robot wow flash sync Dude, yeah, good at it. Great at it, guys. Wow, very cool video. They're using the robot for those shots. The bolt. Oh my nice. god. Nice. Dude, that's a cool effect, man. I would love to see that happen more in video. In people's videos that's a creative and cool idea because the raw photos you're able to do 120 f <laughs> look i love the i love the disclaimer yes these are raw photos oh and they've got the the file name over here 
because it can do 120 frames per second raw and it's global shutter, you can just pull it and, and use that in your video like they're doing here, but then do this stack. I mean, this is a lot of work in After Effects and stuff, but I mean, dead gum, that's cool. Oh my God. This is why you use a real camera. This is why you don't use your phone. It's kind of like as as phones get better and better, we have to have technology and, and, and cameras like this that are doing things that are, have never been done before. And this is why these big cameras exist. This is why. Because this is like as far as you can push it. Nobody can, can hold a candle to this. No other company can do this. Sony has too much money. They have they, their sensor technology is the best. It's just frustrating because I still love the Canon colors on my C70, but yeah, I might have to give that up. Two, one, zero. All engine running. Lift off. We have a lift off. It's astonishing. Wow, very cool. all the creative possibilities this camera opens up. Very cool. Dude, the way they're editing that is sick. Very exciting, very cool. This is gonna change everything. Dude, yeah, that was sick. Goosebumps. Okay, well, I just reacted to that event and um, I think that, that line is, is true. This does change everything. I don't think that video shooters primarily will be switching to this from an a7s but i do think this kind of marks a moment in time where we're gonna see this stuff carried through to their other cameras you know that's what sony does this is exciting this is a big deal global shutter is here what do you think of the a93 please let me know down below i'm excited i think a camera that you know this is the s5 mark ii still a wonderful camera you could buy two and a half of these for the price of an A93 and still shoot a movie on this and get away with it. So don't ever think that just because something new is out that your old thing that you have, your measly A7S III is now worthless. I just, I want to put that out there. Obviously as a tech enthusiast, as a camera enthusiast, I am excited about this. I think this is big news. I think this is a big deal. Would love to get my hands on one and try one out. Um, but if you're an owner of a previous Sony camera, or I mean, of course you are, you know, if, if, if you're watching this video, you probably don't have the camera. It's not out yet. It's a pre-order. <laughs> so whatever camera you have is good enough. Trust me. I mean, Apple literally just shot the entire event on the iPhone. Now, does this hold a candle to the, does an iPhone hold a candle to the A93? No, of course not. Like this is next level. And like I was saying, I think this is where we need to be for big cameras. They need to be so ridiculously better than an iPhone that the chasm between professional camera and iPhone is just wider. The, the gap is wider. So it's like, if you know you need this, you know you need this. If not, you could probably get away with your iPhone. Anyways, see you next time.